Hi, my name's Alan Edwards, and in this development blog video, I'm going to show you how to set up Git LFS on Amazon Web Services. So by the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to push files via Git to uh, S3 via your LFS server running on uh, AWS API Gateway and Lambda. So I'll just talk briefly about the version control systems available for game development. You have, uh, on the enterprise level, Perforce, which is what most studios use. Uh, Plastic SCM, which is a, a paid-for one as well. Perforce is paid per, per user. Um, and Subversion, which is completely free. That's Apache license. All of these solutions need, a, uh, need running on a server, and you need to maintain the, the server infrastructure. So let's talk about uh, Git LFS and the solution that I'm using uh, to develop Estranged. So I'm running uh, Git as normal, just with uh, Bitbucket, or you can use GitHub. However, I use Bitbucket because you can actually have private repositories for free. Uh, with GitHub, you, you have to pay per head. Uh, and on the uh, Git LFS side, I'm using Amazon API Gateway to send requests through to Amazon Lambda and the data actually gets stored in Amazon S3. So there's three layers in AWS which uh, you have to set up, but once it's set up, uh, there are no servers to manage. So the upfront uh, effort is, is well worth it in my opinion. And this scales very well to, uh, well, whatever you want to store in S3. So let's go into the cost per month. So if you want to store 100 gigabytes of data in Amazon S3, that's going to cost you $2.30 if you use the US East 1 region, which is, uh, I think that's Ohio. Um, obviously, if you're, if you're on the other side of the world, you don't want to use that region, and the, the, trans and the, the storage rates and transfer rates change. They're more expensive, uh, but only by a few cents. So uh, if, you, if you look at the S3 pricing page, you can work it out. And I uh, did a back of the envelope uh, 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 calculation for how much data you want to, you'd, you'd probably want to download in a month. Uh, so 25 gigabytes using US East 1 again would cost you $2.25. And the free tiers of uh, API Gateway and Amazon Lambda cover a lot of uh, compute time in Lambda and a lot of API requests. So you won't actually ha get much compute time in Lambda because the, uh, the Lambda in this, uh, in this setup just forwards requests to Amazon S3. It generates a pre-signed authenticated URL that the user can upload and download data to and from. Uh, so let's go to getting started. So what you'll need is an AWS account. Uh, if you download the uh, the, the deployable that I'm going to be using for this, that's the estranged LFS, um, the, the actual code for the Lambda. So this is, this is the code uh, on GitHub. So if you go to that URL, you can, you can see all the source code. And I've also got on the releases page a, a fully built version that you can just deploy to Lambda, which I'm going to be using in this tutorial. However, I would recommend that you, you check out the solution and build it yourself so you, can, you know what code's going up there. And you can also customize the authentication piece. Uh, Source tree is the Git client application I'm going to be showing you in this. And uh, you also need to install Git LFS itself, and that's just git-lfs.github.com. The slides for this YouTube video are available to download in the description. Uh, I'd recommend uh, doing that. Uh, because it, I may go through this too quickly, uh, and it's good to have a reference for this stuff. So, uh, oh, and also any URLs and stuff, you'll just be able to to, to click on to to go to the relevant place. You won't have to copy it from YouTube. So uh, the first step is setting up the S3 buckets. This is where the data gets stored. Your name for the bucket has to be globally unique. So I've gone with the very inventive my LFS bucket here, but. This is set in stone. To, to change this later, you have to copy all of the data from, from one bucket to another. So uh, just pick something that's sensible. But you just hit Create Bucket, uh, and then Name It, and click Create on the bottom left-hand corner there. And that's your bucket done. Uh, so that's somewhere to put the data. The next is setting up the, uh, the authorization piece. So this is with uh, Amazon IAM. Uh, this allows your Lambda function to generate pre-signed URLs to upload and download data. 
for when you're pulling and pushing from the, the Git repo. So if you go to IAM and the URLs at the top of the page, click on roles. Uh, there's a step one is create new role. Uh, you need to select the role type because you can have roles for different Amazon services, but we want one for AWS Lambda. You attach some policies, so uh, you can make the permissions more granular, but since you are in full control over this Lambda function, I think it's okay to pick the kind of generic Amazon S3 full access policy, but if someone were to find a way to compromise that code, um, then it's better to have scope down policies. But for, for the purposes of this tutorial, just pick uh, AWS Lambda basic execution policy and Amazon S3 full access. Once you've done that, uh, type a sensible role name uh, so you can find it later, uh, and then just click create role. So that's the Amazon part done. Uh, sorry, the I am part done. Uh, so the first step to deploy the Lambda is to uh, click on Create Lambda Function. Uh, select a blueprint will pop up. You just want a blank function. It will try and guide you to configure triggers for the Lambda function, but we'll set that up ourselves. So just click Next at that point. And then you want to configure the function, so you give it a name. Uh, make sure you pick the runtime of C Sharp. Uh, and then the uh, the deployment package I was talking about earlier, you can grab that from github.com slash alanedwards slash estranged.lfs slash releases. And you can uh, upload that zip uh, from that URL directly to this page. So you don't have to build any code in Visual Studio, it just it just works. Um, but like I said, the, the best thing to do would be to clone that repo and build it yourself just so you can you can see what it's doing. So that, uh, that deployment package accepts a few environment variables, so LFS underscore bucket. Uh, so we're going to set it to my LFS bucket, because that's the bucket name in S3 that we created. LFS username set to testing, LFS password, password. Obviously, this is, this is just temporary for testing. Uh, down the page a little bit, you have Lambda function handler and role. So the handler is this long C-sharp namespace at the bottom of the slide here. Uh, if you download the slides, you can just copy and paste that. That's also on the uh, place where you download the zip. You can copy and paste it from there as well. So paste that into the handler. Um, that just tells Lambda where the, uh, the, the actual function is to, to enter this, this AWS Lambda, uh, to enter the, the kind of C-sharp code. Um, so next is picking the role. So you created the role previously. Just pick my LFS role. Uh, then you just hit Next, and it'll ask you to look at all the details of the Lambda and just click Create Function. So the next thing we want to do is uh, create an, an API to call the Lambda function. So if you go to API Gateway and the URLs at the top of the slide there, uh, hit uh, Create New API, give it a name. Again, these names are difficult to change later, so uh, for now I guess you're probably following through just testing things. but. If this is a, a final pass for you, give it a, a sensible name. Uh, the next step is to uh, click Actions, Create Resource on the, uh, the root resource. You won't have anything else there. It'll ask you what do you want to make for a child resource. And there's a little checkbox at the top called Configure as Proxy Resource. And a proxy resource allows you to forward all requests to the Lambda function, um, which is what we want to do, because that Lambda function operates as an ASP.NET uh, web handler, so all of the URLs for this this API proxy should go directly to that Lambda, so it can decide what to do. So that will allow it allow you to upload and download files through that one Lambda function. So then uh, the next step is to create the resource. Then it will direct you to this page to actually set up the proxy and tell it to call Amazon Lambda. Um, so you say the integration type is of type uh, Lambda function proxy. Lambda region, just pick the region that you created your Lambda function in. Uh, and the Lambda function is, uh, you know, the name that you gave it. Uh, next, it'll ask you if you want to grant permission to API Gateway to execute that Lambda. You click OK. Uh, the final stage of this is to click Actions, Deploy API. Uh, it'll ask you for a stage name. Uh, just click, uh, uh, just type Production then click Deploy. And once it's deployed, 
uh, I would copy that URL because that will be the URL that we'll use later to actually push uh, binaries into from Git. So to review, you've got an S3 bucket in the region that you decided with the name that you decided to store the data. Uh, you've got a role that permits access to read and write to that uh, S3 bucket. You've also got a Lambda function to process requests from the API. And you've also got the public facing API endpoint that allows all this to, to work. So that should be all set up now. So if we want to test that, uh, you go to source tree, uh, click create new repository. Um, just to, to kind of demo this, uh, I selected create repository on account, and so it, so it also creates the repository on my, my Bitbucket account, uh, but I made it private just for testing. So once you've created the, the repository, uh, go up to the repository menu at the top, click uh, git LFS, and then initialize repository. So then it will ask you to, uh, if you want to start using git LFS, uh, what I did at, uh, for step two there is I added U asset and U map. And U asset is the Unreal Engine 4 asset uh, format, and they can get very, very big. Uh, U map are the extremely big uh, map files. Once you have built lighting and stuff, they, they can get very big. So they're both things that I would like to store in Git LFS rather than the Git repository itself. So once you've, you've set up the extensions you want to track, click track files. And that will create you a git attributes file in that repository root. The other file that you need here is a .lfs config file. So the .lfs config file tells git lfs where to send the uh, binaries, or where to get them from, and also some uh, configuration variables like timeouts. So the reason I told you to copy that uh, API gateway URL is because it gets pasted in here. So this uh, authentication we're using, uh, f for that, that kind of deployable package, it uses HTTP basic authentication. So if you just do username colon password at the endpoint of your API gateway, that will uh, authenticate you to pull and push binaries uh, into that LFS repo. So if you save that in LFS config and commit that to the repo, that means that everyone that clones that Git repository will be able to read and write to the uh, Git LFS uh, setup using that one username and password. So in the short term, that's, that's nice and easy. But in the long term, you probably want to look at some better access control. So each user has their own username and password. But I won't go into that in this tutorial. So if you commit both of those files, the git attributes file and the LFS config file, uh, now it's time to actually try and commit a binary file. So you see on the left there, I picked a, a map out of estranged, which is about 20 megabytes. Uh, just committed it. I have the push changes immediately to orange in master checkbox checked. Uh, so I click commit. Then on the right there, step two, it tries to push it up. So you can see that git LFS is logging a line there, 20 megabytes out of 20 megabytes. That looks good. Uh, it looks like it uploaded everything fine to our, to our setup. So I went back to the Amazon console, um, the Amazon S3 URL you can get from an earlier slide. And uh, if you look at the bottom there, you can see that the, uh, the file was pushed in. Now, it won't have the name that you committed it with it will have the hash of the file. So it looked at the contents and generated a cryptographic hash uh, of that and used that instead. Um, so that looks like it's working. If you're at this stage, then that's everything set up. So future work here, like I said, um, the deployable package that you just used just uses the uh, username and password from the environment variables we set up on the Lambda. Um, future work would be to actually pull that, that, that repo down, uh, change the authentication to suit your needs, and, uh, and deploy that instead. Um, also, if you want to contribute to this repo, um, there's, a, there's an S3 blob adapter there, but uh, if you'd like to contribute any other adapters, uh, it's just a case of implementing an interface in C-sharp. Um, so please get in touch if you, if you, uh, if you feel like you can, you can help with that. 
Uh, if there are any questions, ask them in the comments or send me an email to alan at alanedwards.com. Thank you very much for watching.